Hello, Andrew here, and today we're going over everything you need to know to make a map grid. Now, a map grid comes in quite handy if the area you want a map is either too big for one map, or you want a little more detail in each map. Now, the grid that I made here is a little overkill probably, but uh, the methods for this will work with any skill. Okay, before we can make a good map grid, we kind of need to know a little more about how the maps actually work. If you think you already know all about them, because you've worked with it enough, then I'll put a link in the description to skip this part. Uh, but I think you'll most likely learn something from this. Okay, uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is choose how big of a map you need or want, uh, depending on what you're doing. Now I've got uh, one of each map here in the same center. There are five scales that you can choose from. And, uh, this is the default scale which is one block per pixel and as you can see it's I cleared out the center that I'm in right here. And the next level up is two blocks, well two by two for every pixel, and uh, then four by four, eight by eight, and sixteen by sixteen. Now on the biggest one uh, you can't really see too much because every pixel represents one chunk. Now if you're trying to map a small area like a town, uh, you are probably best off going with either level 0 or level 1 because uh, down here you can still see some de a lot of the details and uh, if you go up here it's a little too big to see too much and if you're trying to map more of a continent to an island I would recommend either using the level 2 or level 3 uh, my favorite is the level 3 because uh, it gives you a pretty good preview of the biomes in the area and uh, like these gray pixels down here you can still see villages and things of that sort. Now I really don't recommend using the level 4 map unless the area that you're going to map is say 15,000 blocks across. Uh, for anything else you should be able to get by just with the smaller maps. Once we have an idea how big we want the map to be and we're ready to get started, we just have to make the map. Now to make a map, all you need to do is make a compass, which is just four pieces of iron around a, comp uh, around a piece of redstone, and then uh, surround the compass in paper to make the map. Now the blank map, uh, doesn't do anything until you right click with it in your hand and uh, you just want to go to where the where you want the map to be centered before you right click and uh, you don't have to be all that precise with where you go because it snaps to a grid uh, centered at zero zero and uh, every 128 meters in each direction or uh, basically no matter where you stand in this 128 by 128 area the map will always be centered on the sand here. So I could go anywhere within 64 blocks of this sand and it will always be centered in the same spot. Now uh, this can be a little frustrating if you're trying to make a map on a small area because no matter where you go in this whole area it will always be centered in the same spot right there. But uh, it's not too big of a deal when you get to the bigger maps. Now to make the map bigger all you have to do is put the map in the crafting grid and surround it in paper. 
you do not want to shift click at all with these maps because then it will take the paper but it will not make the map any bigger and uh, also if you are making it bigger multiple times it's a good idea to put it into your inventory in between making it bigger each time or you might end up crashing the client it's, the maps are still kind of buggy so uh, once you've got the map you want just hold it in your hand and it will update now if you want to get the information on the map like I have here all you have to do is hit F3 and H at the same time. So F3 and H toggles the information there. The first piece of information is the ratio of pixels to blocks. So 1 to 8 just means every pixel is 8 blocks across. And that is a level 3 or 4 map. The default level is 0. And this particular map is 1,024 blocks across. And uh, if you want to fill it in, uh, I would recommend uh, either doing a going out to the edge and going around and working your way back to the middle if you want to end where you started, and keep your paths about 200 blocks apart, and you shouldn't miss any pixels. So, uh, you might notice uh, maps on the wall got a little bit messed up from this. And uh, that's not a big deal. As soon as you log out and back in, the uh, maps will fix themselves. Now for the grid part. You're going to need an item frame for every map on the grid. And uh, when you're placing the item frames, make sure you're clicking one time for every frame or you're most likely going to put more than one on every block uh, if you're holding down that is and now for the center of the map it has to be a multiple of 128 for each coordinate uh, because that's the grid that they snap to automatically so if just to make things easier for right now I'm doing a level 1 map and level 0 map and that one is 128 blocks across so the very center is going to be 0, 0 and this one is going to be 128 blocks off of that one and each one the same distance they all have to be the same size so I've just, just got to go within 64 blocks of the center and right click with the map and it makes my first map. Now just to keep track of things better it's a very good idea to rename the map and just to be simple about it I'm going to name this one zero zero because that's the center and before I put it on the wall I'm going to make a copy of it. So when I put it on the wall I have an extra so I've got the name level 0 map and uh, the nice thing about keeping a copy in the chest below is that if anything happens to the map on the wall you don't have to remake the map you can just pull one out of the chest and put it back on the wall. So, uh, the other thing with this is that if you want to explore the map, you can put one copy on the wall and have one in your hand and anything you do with the one in your hand will update the one on the wall as well because you made it as a copy. And uh, no matter where you go on the map, the one on the wall will always have a green arrow and all players holding the map will show up as a white arrow. So, for the rest, all, all we've got to do is go to the coordinates and start the maps. So I'm going to start 
with the one above this one which is going to be 0 on the X and negative 128 on the Z and uh, that's because the very top left is a negative for both coordinates so just make a quick trip and all I have to do is get within 64 blocks of it so right here is close enough my Z went over negative 64 so that's close and this is the next map just take this back do the same thing rename it and make a copy if it works best if you do it in that order because if you make the copy before you rename it you have to pay to rename each map but if you copy it after each one keeps the name so uh, this one is going to be 0 negative 128 make a copy and put it on the wall and keep the extras in the chest I sometimes even put a hidden chest just in case maybe a creeper comes by or something and you don't want to lose all the maps just from one thing so uh, if you look a little closer you can see that the top of this map lines up with the bottom of this map now uh, there is a pretty big space between them but I think it helps if you use a background that doesn't stand out too much uh, I think the clay matches pretty well with the background of the frame itself so uh, just about anything that doesn't stand out will work so I'm just going to do the rest of these and show what it should look like now we have a full 3x3 three three grid of maps now this is the easiest maps of course but if you do them any bigger as long as they're all the same size it should line up just as nicely I even got a couple of villages on it here uh, this one right here and another right down here and on the bigger maps they usually only show up as one pixel so that is one thing that's nice about the little maps you can see everything and uh, in the chest here there is a copy of each map all in the same order as they are on the wall and uh, if you, uh, anything changes on the map itself here the map on the wall will not update itself you actually have to pull one out of the chest and go into the area for it to update and that's another nice reason to keep them in the chest so you don't have to take it off the wall every time something changes so uh, if you want to make a copy of the map you don't have to touch the wall just take it out of the chest and put it in the crafting grid like that any doesn't matter what shape and it'll give you a copy so uh, I think this is a very nice way to do the map grids uh, with, especially with the maps in the chest below and uh, renaming them really helps keep track of them especially if you're going to be getting into a bigger grid uh, but if you're planning on doing anything bigger than say eight across uh, anyone that's doesn't have the best computer is going to be a little bit lagged by it so uh, it might be best to keep it uh, with a bigger map if you're doing anything that big but uh, that's all there really is to it so uh, if this helped in any way please leave a comment if you missed anything or anything at all so thanks but